Welcome to In The Workshop, mounting a copper boiler for the Stuart Models beam engine on a suitable base and making it work. This is part 3 and I'm going to fit the hand pump to the metal top of the base. And the easiest way to do this is to temporarily clamp the hand pump to the base. I'm using a spring clamp to temporarily hold the hand pump in place while I mark out the positions of the holes. And just for a bit of variety, after marking the holes, instead of using a centre drill, I use the centre punch on the bench. And this way I can go straight to the twist drill, but really, I do prefer using a centre drill. I'm using a 48 number drill, which is tapping size for 6BA. And in this clip, I'm very carefully using a 6BA tap to cut the thread in the metal plate that sits on the baseboard. After threading the holes, I countersunk them underneath the metal plate like this. Really though, I should have countersunk these holes before threading them, so if you're doing a job like this, drill the holes, countersink them, then thread them. That is more logical. This steel plate is only 3mm thick. It would have been better if it had made it out of quarter plate, but then the whole assembly would have been very heavy. In this clip, I'm checking that everything lines up, and it does, it's OK. With the necessary depth of the countersink, there aren't really many threads in this piece of steel, but there are sufficient threads there to hold the bolts in place. This metal plate is only really held to the baseboard in two places, and the two places are underneath the boiler. The boiler will be secured to the baseboard itself using some 2BA bolts. So I suppose it's an easy enough job to take out the 2BA bolts, lift the metal plate off the baseboard, and then undo these four bolts that hold the hand pump in place. But sometimes life is complicated, so I'm doing it this way. I'm using some Loctite 603, plenty of it in fact, far too much of it really, then I'm wiping off the surplus, and I have four bolts that are threaded into the steel plate and also Loctited in. So believe me, they are going nowhere. I'm just taking this opportunity to rub down the plate some more with some very coarse sandpaper. And once I've cleaned off all the traces of the grit from the sandpaper and the bits of metal, I'm going to take this into the outer part of the workshop and paint it using some etching primer. Etching primer, usually shortened to etch primer, normally has some kind of acid in it. So when you spray it onto a piece of metal, it sticks to the metal much better than normal primer. When I paint castings on steam engines, I don't use any kind of a primer. I just put the paint straight on the casting. But you do need to take a slightly different approach when painting a flat surface like this, otherwise the paint will just come off. A few years ago, I bought some silicone fuel tubing, and it looked much bigger than this when I bought it on eBay. But when it arrived, shock horror, it was very small, and it turns out to be possibly the most useful stuff I've ever had. You will have seen this stuff many times when I'm using the acid bath because I use it to lower components into the acid bath. In this application, I'm using this silicone tubing to cover the threads of the bolts so that the paint doesn't get on the threads. And it's painting time, but don't get too excited. This is a very short bit of painting. It's too cold in the outer part of the garage today, so I'm not stopping here for long. And as you can see, the paint is spluttering all over the place, but this is really weird paint. Maybe it's because it's so cold. I mean, it's not exactly Alaska. It's fairly cold for Dewsbury in West Yorkshire, which is in the north of England. And as we all know, it's grim up north. Trouble at mill, etc, etc. Today, this paint appears to be spraying out of the can more diabolically than usual, if there's such a word as diabolically. This etch primer is from Phoenix Paints. And when I paint using Phoenix Paints Precision Paints, with a brush, the same thing happens. Initially it looks terrible, and then just before it dries, it suddenly seems to look okay. It must be witchcraft. What I'm doing at the moment is writing the word top on top of this piece of wood. And I'm doing this because I'm going to varnish the top, just to waterproof it in case any water gets under the metal plate. This was the pressure gauge siphon I originally fitted to the boiler. I don't know why, but when I fitted it, it seemed to twist round and it wasn't very strong. And this is why it's very, very thin-walled, far too thin in my opinion for a siphon, because a siphon often gets knocked. You knock the pressure gauge, it bends the siphon. But a siphon like this would break too easily, so I'm going to change it. I'm knocking out the centre of the banjo union so I can show you how it works. This is just a brass bush, and the centre part has a groove turned all the way around it with a parting tool. Then a hole has been drilled from the centre of the groove to the hollow centre of the bolt. But I bought a new one of these. 
The centre bolt fitting is pretty much the same as the other one threaded a quarter by 40 threads per inch, but the pipe is a lot thinner. This pressure gauge siphon comes with two fibre washers, so I'll put those in my box of fibre washers that I never use. So why do we use pressure gauge siphons? Why can't the pressure gauge be screwed straight into the top of the boiler? Because the pressure gauge has some very fragile, soft-soldered components in it, namely the bellows that expand with the pressure and move the needle. So what happens with the siphon, the first time you run the boiler, the steam that gets into the siphon first immediately condenses to water, so you have a water column between the steam and the delicate components inside the pressure gauge. Moving on now to the water gauge, I'm going to remove the water gauge and remove the paint. Currently the boiler is full of water so I think it's probably a good idea to empty that first. And while on the subject of water, I'd just like to say that in the previous clip where I was showing the siphon, as you can see it's like a loop, but it doesn't have to be in that position, you can use it upside down, on its side, back to front, however you want, because the first steam that gets into this pressure gauge siphon condenses to water and it is not dependent on gravity. So it can be in any position, vertically or horizontally, it really doesn't matter. So to all the viewers who took the trouble to write in and tell me I was doing it wrong, I'm sorry, I'm going to plead insanity. Quite a few viewers have written in and told me about this stuff. This is cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, as it's known in the USA. It's used to thin paint, really. I use it for removing paint, I find it very good stuff for doing that, but I've been told by quite a few viewers that it's very dangerous stuff and I shouldn't touch it and I should be very careful with it. So I've finished cleaning my teeth for the day and I'm going to use my toothbrush to remove the paint. And apparently this is better than touching the stuff. Well eventually, after removing the paint and then using the polishing spindle to polish up the parts, here they are, and this is the top fitting, and doesn't it look better? No problem at marking the paint now because there's no paint to mark. I think it looks miles better in just ordinary brass colour. The brass will tarnish with age and heat, but it still looks better than the paint. These particular steam fittings are made by a friend of mine, Chris English of CME Engineering, and I always try and use these fittings because I think they're easily the best on the market. That's my opinion for what it's worth. It's quite easy to tell which fittings are made by Chris English because a lot of them have the letter C stamped on the top caps that fit the water gauges and the clack valves. A bit of useless information, but interesting nevertheless. And at this point I'd like to say I have no financial connection with CME Engineering, or Blackgates Engineering for that matter. The people at Blackgates Engineering and CME Engineering are friends of mine from way back when. From the days when I was actually a young man. From the days when I had hair. But these days I just look like a Father Christmas impersonator. And talking about Father Christmas, it's just occurred to me it's quite near Christmas. I'd better wake the reindeer up. Anyway, I digress. I've fitted the water gauge, and in my opinion, it looks much better. And you can see the C on top of the top cap, if you look carefully. If I freeze the image, it's really obvious there's a C on the top cap. And here's a close-up of the C on the top cap, made by my friend Chris English at CME Engineering. And just as a point of interest, the pop safety valve on this boiler is made by Jubilee Fittings. And Jubilee Fittings is run by Don English and David English. And David happens to be Chris's brother, and Don English, who I really have known for many, many years, is Chris and David's father. The English family have talent and skill in abundance, and I wish I was half as good an engineer as any one of them on a bad day. And meanwhile, back in the real world, using a cloth and some polyurethane varnish, I'm varnishing the baseboard. I'm doing the top, because it says top on there, and I'm doing the sides. Later on I will do the underneath. And finally I'm taking the condenser into the outer part of the workshop to spray that with H-Primer too. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.